Hey guys, I'm Justin here with First Earth Wilderness School. I got uh, instructors Bo Brown and Michael Morgart. That's right. And uh, yeah. we're, we're really excited to be out here this weekend. And I just want to take a second and have these guys share a little bit of what we're going to be doing this weekend. All right. Uh, mainly we're going to be covering the Stone Age wilderness survival techniques of friction fire, cordage, making uh, rope and, and uh, string out of uh, plant fiber, using that cordage to make traps uh, like deadfall, Paiute deadfall traps and spring stick deadfall. Uh, we do each day of instruction, we do a two hour plant walk uh, covering edible, medicinal, useful plants and uh, covering shelter, several different uh, natural shelter types, um, finding and treating water. Michael does a real nice thing on uh, finding and treating water. And we'll also talk some about the general mindset uh, for wilderness scenarios both uh, short-term survival type scenarios and long-term uh, like hunter-gatherer uh, civilizations would have used, what their priorities had to be, uh, what they needed to focus on uh, short-term and long-term uh, in order to, to optimize their survival situation. Great guys, hey it's going to be an awesome weekend, looking forward to it. Thank you sir. Should be a good the weekend. Means to make the fire with this method and you, in any environment. I did this in uh, in the whole valley rainforest, it been rain, it rained. I was out there for five days, and every, it rained every single day. Olympic Peninsula, and, uh, Washington, right? Yep. Yeah. And uh, it, it, I started about ten, somewhere between ten and eleven o'clock that morning, and it was almost dark by the time I got fire. But by God, I got fire. So I'm, I've got that drilled in now. That's <clears throat> that's all I need for a pilot hole. So now <clears throat> I'm going to cut the notch. And see, here's how I do it. And this is kind of important on how you position everything. You want to be very careful because there's a lot of ways if you don't do this right, you can slip and get that knife into it. Generally, you don't want to ever have the knife blade cutting toward your hand. But in this case, I'm using that for an anchor. I'm doing this, there's no way I'm going to cut through that and get into my thumb here. So I use my thumb as an anchor and I do these slicing motions just a little at a time to get a kind of a just a not real huge, not very wide, but a, a V shaped notch into where I'm drilling there. Don't want to get too aggressive and try to do too much at once because this stuff will break out if you try to do that. Pretty soft stuff. <coughs> and that's about what you should end up with. And you want to make sure you're not cutting it in an angle. Like a lot of people will come in from an angle like that and it'll look good from the top, but it doesn't go perpendicular to the flat surface there on the way down. Now after I've got it cut, then I'll come back and widen it just a smidgen at the base. See that where I just widened it out. What that does is as the spindle spins in there, it creates powder. Both pieces are abrading away, creating powder. And that V-shaped notch allows that powder to gather up in one spot and allows it to feed out here. That if it was a narrow V, it can actually compact it enough to keep it from where the, the friction, it's, it's going to heat it up to about 600 degrees and it needs to be able to spread apart a little bit so it can get oxygen in there with all that heat and the fuel and then it will be, that little pile of powder will pretty soon start glowing, it'll be an ember. But that's basically all we're going to do is spin that. Now, on this part, there's a bunch of things, there's about five different things you have to pay attention to at once. Uh, one is your first thing is your stance. I like to get where this is straight up and down. This is in a straight line coming out here. Your foot is going to be about an inch away from that <clears throat> near hole there that you're digging into. And I like to get this, like I said, all stretched out because I'm going to lay on my knee. And the whole point of that is to get into position. So when I'm spinning this, I can lean forward 
and lock that part of my wrist into my shin. Because if this is out in space and wobbling around, it's going to give you trouble. <clears throat> and it's harder for some people to get into that stance than it is others. But like I said, if you get that part of your wrist locked into your shin, like lean forward where you can get to it, that be straight up and down and perpendicular to the hearth. So that's one thing, is your stance there. That's what it should be, straight up and down here. Fairly straight up and down here, but enough where you can lean forward and get the angle to lock your wrist into that shin. Then, holding the bow. The other thing, I use my tips of my three fingers, see that? The very tips, and then my thumb. So I can do that, so I can pinch that and control the string tension. See that? That's real important because it wants you, when you start cranking, uh, you're going to start with just barely enough pressure <coughs> to hold it in place. You don't want to push down very hard at all. You want to have it really solid and controlled where it's not wobbling, but if you push down too hard, it's not going to work. So you have to just enough pressure to start out with some short little things back and forth. And then get it where you have to do a full length, the full length of that string. See that from one end to the other. That's where you get your maximum efficiency. The other thing is that your arm wants to do that because just the way it works. And if, if you let it do its normal thing, that string will be climbing up and moving all over the place. So you want to practice doing a flat stroke where you can keep that string in close to the same, you know, where it's not moving up and down a whole bunch. See that? So I'm kinking the string, flat stroke, long stroke, the whole length of it, just enough pressure to get everything working. And once once you get a stroke like that going, see that nice even flat stroke there? Then you can slightly increase the downward tension that I'm pushing on that spindle. And at the same time, you'll have to tighten up your string tension because the string will be loosening up. And I just stop. Whenever you think you got, you start to see smoke coming out of that little thing, you'll just stop. I think it went out, but because uh, everything's really wet. And I'll crank it a little bit longer. And that's about as fast as you need to go. If you're going any faster than that, have the possibility of that. <laughs> yeah, I think that would. No, it's in there. Actually, that hardly ever happens. Did it burn through? No, no, there it is. Once you get that little ember started, everything is really damp, so it's it's really not wanting to go good. But that's the ember. And once you get that, don't get in a big hurry. Just let that ember envelop as much of that powder as you can. And just very carefully and gently pick that up and dump it into your nest there. And then I'll, I'll kind of taco it in just very gently. Just enclose it like that. And when I start blowing on it, I'm going to hold it up. Because if you're holding it down like this, the flame's going to come up and take your eyebrows or hair. <laughs> so. so it's about big enough now, so I'll just enclose it where it'll hold it in place. If you crush it too much, it'll go out. So, you know as much as I do about it now. <laughs> <laughs> the rest is practice. Hey guys, it's day two here at First Earth, trying to do the bow drill fire. Um, got most of my components for trying out some new things. Gonna go with, uh, we got some yucca, yucca branches. And then uh, gonna try a few different things with some spindles and see if we can get something going. So stick with me and...
dispersed earth wilderness living skills. I mean, they know what they're talking about. Ooh.